What's going on guys, Teddy Baldessar here. Now over the last few years since I've had this channel, I've had the opportunity to handle thousands of watches probably now. And as you even go up in the price ranges and the levels of horology taking place in the watches you're handling, you start to look back and I think even appreciate more what's able to be done at an affordable level. So today I'm gonna to be looking at some watches under $500 automatic watches that are great watches to take a look at. And just so this video isn't so long, I'm going to link down below to a really helpful blog that actually lists out over 40 automatic watches under $500. It'll be in the description, so definitely check that one out. Now, just some ground rules before we jump in here. Of course, automatic watches only, so no hand-winding watches. Also, when looking at the prices, going to stick to retail prices, I think that makes this a bit more future-proof because supplies change, uh, what's available at different prices definitely changes in the premium market all the time. And then finally, going to limit the amount of Seiko 5s mentioned here. Just a couple uh, mentioned, I think just actually one here in this list is going to be mentioned just because it would get a little crazy when this would turn into a wormhole. I do have some videos looking at different obscure Seiko 5 models, so definitely check those out. If you just look up Teddy Baldessar Seiko 5, those will probably pop up. But guys, let's jump off. And speaking of Seiko, let's start there. And they're gonna probably be a recurring theme on this video. So about two years ago or so, I did a video where I went around to different retail locations, places like Macy's, Walmart, and tried to get the best watches I possibly could for the best deals possibly that I could. And it was a little bit tough to do that, as you might suspect. But one of the watches that I found was the SRPC93. So that was the Samurai version, the Save the Ocean model. But to start us off here, I wanna look at the turtle variant of that, the SRPC91. So as many of you that are familiar with Seiko and their turtles, very wearable case for the case size, appropriate price here. You're getting a Hardlex crystal on here. But I think the real star of the show is that dial. It's very striking with that blue fading to black. It really does emulate that of ocean waves. And to me, it almost reminds me of the Seamaster 300 on a budget with that kind of wave dial that you're seeing here. It's a very good choice if you're looking for a dive watch to get into this world prospects diver. You're getting a solid movement within, although not the 6R15 family or even the new 6R3 five still does the job does feature hacking on these movements so you're not looking at the 7s 26 for example in a great way to start off if you're looking in the world of dive watches for under 500 dollars now the idea of if it's not broke don't fix it that probably is the best way to describe timex over the last three years as soon as they figured out that the marlin was going to be a cash cow for them and moving into automatic mechanical watches made a lot of sense then they jumped in, they, dive, they dove head first into that idea. And this watch here they're gonna be looking at is a kind of a representation of what that attitude has really brought forth from Timex with the Navi XL Auto. So this watch comes in a variety of different styles. I really like this IP coded case. I think it looks really sleek and I, I just like that case format with this overall design, the black bezel and also the black dial. Just think it's the most attractive out of all the variants. From a value perspective, I don't know if these are always going to be the best options out there, but from a design perspective, Timex always does a really nice job on these. You're getting an automatic Miyota caliber within, which is going to tick and do its job. This one comes with 100 meters of water resistance, so it's more diver-esque here than a true dive watch that can take a beating like no other, so just kind of keep that in mind. But this one could be worn with a variety of different straps. I think you could dress it up a little bit with the right strap, especially if you went for more traditional stainless steel variants. Also, I really like the execution of the hollowed out hour hand and showing the 24 hour scale on the inner part of the dial. I think that's a nice little feature. And these Navi XLs, I think are really nice choices for somebody that wants maybe the dive watch looks, once it at an affordable price, and once it from a brand like Timex, which I think is doing a very good job in answering to both of those sides of the aisle and the fashion forward more people versus the enthusiast crowd. Now, definitely one of the most popular videos this year, reviews that I did was of the Orient Kamasu, basically labeling it as the best dive watch you can get for around 250, 300 bucks. And to be honest, I probably stand by that. I think you could also throw in a couple additional options with some new Seiko 5s getting thrown into the mix. You can also throw in the Orient Cano, which is really good. But when you factor in wearability, that sapphire crystal, it's, it's really tough to beat. Now for this watch coming in with a 41 millimeter case, actually just shy of 42 millimeters. But when you factor in the lug to lug distance on this, it's gonna actually wear closer to a 39 to 40 millimeter. And I think from a mass market perspective, it's kind of emulating where I see a lot of things going with the popularity, say with the Tudor Black Bay 58 and those dimensions on that watch. You're also getting an in-house Orient 
caliber within, which is going to be reliable. I think it's honestly providing sometimes even better performance than I'm finding in a lot of Seiko counterparts. So that's really going in its favor. 200 meters of water resistance, so it's certainly serviceable in that regard. And you get that sapphire crystal. It's not an ISO certified diver, but if you just want a no-nonsense dive watch, could be paired with a variety of different straps, different dial colors to choose from, and perhaps maybe the best value for money pick, I think I might put my money on the Kamasu. Now in the world of watch enthusiasts, there are cult-like followings that some brands are able to garner up. And one of those that come to mind is Vostok. And people that love Vostok watches absolutely love these things. So I have to mention the Amphibia here, even though it's probably been mentioned so many times on lists of this type all over the internet, but it can't go without being mentioned, I think. I think for around 90 bucks, it's not necessarily my cup of tea, but you can't deny the value that's taking place here. 200 meters of water resistance, you're getting an automatic movement, wearable case dimensions, but there's so many different options out there. And then their own movements within, which I've heard many times people are regulating these things with incredible accuracy, getting these things close to cost specifications in terms of uh, accuracy on a day-to-day. -day. They're pretty impressive. They're built to be bashed around and they're a great place to look if you're just looking for a no-nonsense dive watch under 100 bucks. Now, if there's a few watches that I have become a little bit exhausted with mentioning over and over again, it's with the Saab 033 and the 035. Not that they're bad watches, but they certainly get mentioned more than enough on places online, and they're really good watches, no question about it. But it seems like now the supply is finally, seems to be depleting where the prices are now going up on these and it's harder to find them now under $500. Very similar to what's kind of happening with the SKX, for example. But I think now looking at those going up and maybe giving some love to the larger wristed individuals, a great compromise, or not even a compromise, but a great, maybe a shift in attention to somewhere else is the SARY055. So this watch along with this counterpart, the 057, are basically more built out versions of the Saab 033. Larger case size, 41 millimeters and a lug to lug extending out to 49 millimeters. So that is going to size some certain people out, but I can see for those with larger wrists, this is a big winner. And I don't think many people even know these things exist. You're getting a nice healthy water resistance on these Seiko 4R36. So not the 6R15, but still a really solid movement, especially considering these are closer to around $400, $450 out on the market. And with a lot of the depleted supply of the Saab 033, Three and the 035, especially for those that maybe were just even looking in that direction because they didn't know these were existing. Uh, these might be some good ones to take a look at. Okay, so now we're in the dress, we're in the dress category. I don't know if you knew that. I don't think I mentioned it at the beginning, but you probably expected maybe see an Orient Bambino on this list. Maybe, maybe you did. If you didn't, well, um, sorry to inform you, but we are going to have an Orient Bambino on this list uh, with generation four here. So this one combines elements from some of the earlier generations with some of the more minimal styles that have been rolled out as well in some of the later generations. So using those simple stick markers, you have a variety of different colors to choose from. A little bit larger when it comes to the case size here, which is basically the rub with many of the Bambinos out there. But when you're looking at a watch for under $200, that can be uh, look rather sophisticated for being a watch of that price, getting a nice in-house Japanese movement from Orient Within, featuring hacking and hand winding, and usually getting, again, good performance compared to the competition in the price range. It's really hard to overlook these. Again, though, just kind of get lost the same way you can with the Seiko 5s and just looking at the different variants available. But I think we have to mention them for a video about watches under $500 for automatics. Now to close out this dress category, going to be looking back at Seiko with the SRPD37. So earlier this year, covered this watch and basically labeled it as being the best style you can find for 400 bucks. And I stand by that. The thin, fine finishing, the line finish on the dial here, it's, it's very recognizable. I think it's been emulated by other brands in this price range after the success of these. This, of course, is a member of the Cocktail Time family, which, as you might suspect, was made to resemble different cocktails with the dial designs. This one coming in a green dial variant, which is just very vivid. It transitions to black and different lighting conditions. And I'm just a huge fan of this one. It's a little bit larger with the case size if you're looking in the area of dress watches at 40.5 millimeters, getting a 4R35 movement within, 50 meters of water resistance, and a nice dome hard lex that almost resembles the same type of warm hue that comes with those vintage acrylic style crystals. And when combining with that dial, it's a killer combo. Now for this last section, I wanna combine field watches, pilot watches, and everyday watches kind of all together because I think they all overlap in some regard. And to start us off, I wanna look at the Notice 
sector. So Notice is a really cool micro brand. They're based on the West Coast here in the United States. I reviewed the Retrospect 2 about a year ago. It was an awesome dive watch at around 400 bucks. So definitely an honorable mention for that one as well in this video. Uh, but as of late, what we've been seeing as a big trend in watches has been sector dials, and I'm all for it. I reviewed a Longines uh, Heritage Classic earlier this year, their sector dial. And honestly, I mean, I'm all, again, aboard the sector dial train. This model comes at a more affordable price range at $425, getting a nice wearable case at 38 millimeters and contrasting with this pretty solid lug to lug of 47 millimeters, presence without being overbearing, lug width 20 millimeters, you're getting 150 meters of water resistance, so more than serviceable for everyday needs, an automatic Seiko NH35, and I know these guys do fine tune and regulate these movements before sending anything out. And with this one, you're getting a unique handset, pretty striking case design with a mix of bead blasting and different polished finishes. And notice they do a really good job with producing some solid watches for the money. Now, when thinking of automatic watches under $500 or around $500, I should say, I think Hamilton is right there in the conversation. And I wanted to include Hamilton, but if we're talking about retail prices, they retail a little bit over that for their autos. And then for their mechanical, which is a hand winding movement, that one is just under $500, but unfortunately it is a hand winding movement. So we have to look elsewhere for that field watch style. And the watch we're gonna be looking at is their Marathon General Purpose. Now there's two different versions of this watch that's available. One you have with a ETA caliber within, which is gonna be hand winding, but then you also have an automatic Seiko variant, which is gonna be much more south in terms of the price tag and also featuring an automatic movement within. And of course, that's gonna be the one we're gonna be looking at today. $360, 34 millimeter case. So pretty small here. Lug to lug is only 40.8 millimeters, but you're getting a regulated Seiko automatic NH35 within. And Marathon is a brand, Canadian brand, make all their watches in Switzerland and have been issuing military grade timepieces since 1941, starting with the Allied Forces and are still creating watches that are used by American Armed Forces as well as Canadian Armed Forces. Now there's a ton of brands that try to deliver their own pilot style watch, kind of emulating that Flieger design, typically the type A style dial. But when you're looking at under $500, it's, it's kind of tough to find one that's usually more traditional, actually has some backstory and some real history in this field. Uh, while doing it at a more affordable price. Stova is a great example of it, just a bit above. But when looking at the original five and of those five brands, the only one that really is able to deliver in this price range uh, by making a couple compromises, but not big compromises, is with Laco. And the reason why this is possible is because they actually feature automatic Miyota calibers within these watches to get this below $500, actually right around $400. Uh, but Laco has been around since 1925. We're actually one of the big five producing watches for the German Air Force during World War II alongside Stova, Vempi, Langa, as well as IWC. The watch we're gonna be looking at here is the Augsburg. This is available both in a 39 millimeter variant as well as a 42, so you can kind of just pick your poison there. Crazy legible type A style dial, those big leaf style hands, also with loom across the dial, that triangle at the 12, which was of course for orientation. The important note here though, is this is a hacking movement. So they did upgrade this, which is a nice benefit. And for 400 bucks, get that tradition, get some outside of the movement. I think case profile wise, is just as good as our thousand dollar price range Flieger style watches. I think this is a definitely a good piece to get into if you're trying to get into the world of pilots uh, for the first time and you only have this amount of money to spend. Next, we have the Baltic HMS002. So Baltic is a really cool micro brand based out of France. I think they came on the scene with several other watches like the Aquascaf, also had their Bi Compacts, which was very interesting uh, entry level, I would say, chronograph with some cool vintage looks. This one is kind of more of that everyday taking the same profile in terms of the design format and stuffing it into a nice everyday piece. 38 millimeter case, 47 millimeter lug to lug, serviceable water resistance at 50 meters, and you're also getting an automatic Miyota 821A. But I think the number one selling point when it comes to Baltic is the design format. I think it's a winner in all aspects. And I think the variety of different colors you can choose from, it's just kind of something you can slap on, put on a variety of different straps and just have some fun with. So I hinted at the idea once Timex got a hold of the fact that the Marlin could be a really nice seller, that they started dumping a ton of different variants available. And one of those, and I'm happy that they did it, was the Timex Day Date, the Marlin. And this one is available in a variety of different colors. My favorite is the green dial variant. I think it really pops. And with that black Day Date function that you get, I think it just really comes together quite well. 40 millimeter case, 
is going to be a little bit on the larger side if you are looking for an everyday wear. It's going to appear a little bit larger just because of that domed effect of the crystal but still a really nice watch that you can find for the money. You're getting a Miyota caliber. Uh, again, not the same in value perspective as maybe Seiko or Orient counterparts, but from a design perspective, I think it really is doing a nice job and that green is rather striking. Now these next two watches I actually featured head to head in a review. It was kind of head to head, but also I came at the conclusion at the end, like, hey, you really can't go wrong. This is more really what you want to go for. The first was, one of the new Seiko 5s, it was the SRPE053. So the Dress KX, as I see some people claiming these uh, as being called, which I kind of like, I can get behind that name. It's a good way to kind of classify it. So 40 millimeter case, wearable lug to lug distance. So basically taking those Seiko 5 sports models and then breaking it down to a smaller case format without that bezel or the rotating bezel, I should say. The one here is this blue dial variant, which I am biggest fan of. I think that's the one that really just sucked me in. Looks really attractive, kind of taking that SKX dial format, of course, and then adding it into a more compact form as a great everyday wear. You're getting 100 meters of water resistance, no screw down crown on this one, but 100 meters, I think for most people out there as a nice everyday piece, that's really all you can ask for, especially in this price range. And you're getting also an upgraded from that 7S26, which is in a lot of Seiko 5 models in previous generations. Uh, so you're getting hacking here, which is a nice added feature and a little bit of up spec in terms of the accuracy. Great loom on this piece, probably the best in its class and just a great watch to go for. If you got about 300 bucks to spend, a little bit less, can't really do much better. The next one that I compared it to was the Orient Maestro. So the Orient Maestro, it doesn't have as much charm as say the Bambino and even the Seiko 5 just previously mentioned, but it does, it just works because it is so versatile. It, it looks a little bit more dressy in terms of its format, but it has some specs that goes along with it that will really allow it to be an everyday piece for the right type of consumer. 100 meters of water resistance, which is gonna be a big thumbs up. Also getting even number lug width. So that's good compared to many of the Orient Bambinos that have that odd number lug width. So you're gonna get a lot more versatility when it comes to straps. And you have the opportunity to choose from a variety of different colors. You can go for a more traditional navy dial, black dial, uh, white dial with blue hands, or you can go for this more seafoam green or teal. I don't really know what you would call this one, but it's pretty striking green and it's just playful. It's maybe not as versatile, but it certainly is fun. Grab some attention and still be able to get a lot of work out of this one when having this one strapped on the wrist. All right, now before wrapping this one up, just a couple things to consider of watches just slightly above that I'd love to be able to include. One was the Hamilton Khaki Field Auto. Honestly, for 500 bucks, if you want an everyday wear, might be one of the best options to go for if you are just not exhausted with them already. I think you really can't do much better than a Hamilton Khaki Field. But and then the other one that I wanna mention is the Tissot Visodate. This was the first Swiss watch that I ever owned. I loved it and really enjoyed it. And I think it's a great gateway into the world of Swiss watches, more dressy, but also with that retro logo, nice wearable case, nice movement within for around 600 bucks. You really can't do much better. I really like the white dial variant. I owned a black dial going back. I definitely would have gotten that one, uh, but a really good watch for somebody that's looking for a dress watch Swiss made from a great brand like Tissot. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. Also definitely check out that blog down below if you did not get enough here, you want more affordable automatic watches. Also be sure to be following us on Instagram, stay up to date with the content, what's coming next, see some cool photos of watches. And of course, head over to teddyballstar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, one of the most trusted places to buy a watch online. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.